Hello. Uh, last video we actually saw uh, a constant voltage regulator uh, using a, 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 a negative feedback with an op amp. Uh, we demonstrated that how it works, and uh, the circuit that we last demonstrated was uh, this particular circuit right here where we actually uh, uh, basically demonstrated its operation um, where we varied the load from uh, no load to load to full load and we found out the voltage was constant uh, basically it's very steady within uh, a millivolt or so between full load and no load but uh, when we varied the input voltage as, as you as seen here when we varied the input voltage here from 20 to 25 volts the the Zener reference here changed its uh, voltage from 6.9 to about 7.01 volts thereby uh, changing the the voltage at the positive input of the op amp and uh, the op amp by a virtue of negative feedback it modified this voltage where this voltage turned out to be around um, from 12 volts that's what we were regulating from 12 volts to about uh, 12.30 uh, volts so about 30 vo 30 millivolts of change for a change of very uh, ch a change of three or four millivolts here we found quite a bit of change here when we when we changed the the input voltage here basically and one of the solutions to uh, to get rid of that change that I suggested was uh, where we can introduce this bias resistor that biases the um, the Zener. If we can uh, basically uh, where uh, where we can replace this bias resistor with uh, a constant current source where the input voltage doesn't matter into the constant current source where it, 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 it regulates that current constant into the uh, to Zener. Uh, so I've made that change and uh, I'll show you quickly how that change affected the output voltage when we varied from the nominal 20 volts to 25 volts. Alright, and uh, the, the load still remains the same, it's about 100 to 20 milliamps full load. All right, so uh, uh, without further ado, this is the modification uh, that I have come up with. So here it is. So this whole resistor here, this whole resistor here is replaced with this whole s circuit here. This circuit here. This circuit is a constant current source, and I will quickly describe its operation. Uh, the rest of the circuit remains the same. I have introduced uh, a 10 ohm resistor here to um, just as a protection for the um, for the transistor here. Uh, the rest of the circuit is still the same. I still have. Uh, uh, although yeah the uh, sorry the uh, the feedback resistor on the top here changes to uh, to 5.1 but it's not not of a consequence because the uh, op pump will take care of the output to compensate for that and also the uh, this one changed it from uh, 6.8 to 6.9 the trimmer still remains the same the load is still the same it's about 120 milliamps of full load in fact, on this circuit, I this is not fitted. This uh, output filter capacitor here doesn't exist because the, the, the circuit's so so stable that I don't actually need uh, an output filter. All right, so the operation of the constant current source is as follows. I, I use an LED to drop down the voltage down to from 20 
uh, we're gonna calculate everything at 20 volts input and we'll see what the difference is at 25 volts so at 20 volts uh, I put a green LED here to drop down the voltage to about 18.2 volts and uh, I will allow um, a current to bias this uh, LED about 5 milliamps and uh, I get a, a an RB a, a base resistor of uh, if you do the calculation 18.2 divided by 5 milliamps gives you 3.64 kilo ohms so that's what I have here and uh, and if this is 18.2 and I have a because I need to source current into the Zener I will use a PNP device because a PNP device will allow you to source current from the source here to the load here our load being our Zener here and uh, 18.2 will go up to by a diode drop will increase the voltage to 18.85 I'm assuming 0.65 uh, voltage drop across this um, emitter based resistor sorry emitter based uh, diode of the transistor and I'm gonna allow because my uh, IZT of this as calculated last time as well from the data sheet of the the uh, Zener IZT IZT of this uh, Zener is uh, 10 milliamps or thereabouts so uh, that is gonna dictate the amount of current that I need to source from my current source so what I have is I have a 10 milliamp current flowing through here uh, that fixes my resistor to about uh, 1.9 kilo ohms resistor and I put a 2 kilo ohm which measured 1.95 kilo ohms resistor I put here from the from the positive supply to the emitter of the PNP device and that is shown here uh, 20 volts drops down to 18.85 and I'm gonna allow 10 milliamp to be sourced from that and that equals to about 119 ohms uh, okay and that's what I have uh, sorry yeah already so this is actually wrong this should be 119 ohms and this is wrong so you can see that that's 119 ohms that's a that's a mistake so it's 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 around 20, uh, 120 ohms so basically that's what I have here and that will allow me to source that current into the uh, the Zener the rest of the circuit remains the same and uh, we'll demonstrate it really quick so I have a few points that I'm monitoring here so as you can see, this one is measuring the this one is measuring the output voltage, the regulated output voltage. This one is measuring the uh, output current into the load. This one is measuring the current into the zener, just like last time. And this one is measuring the uh, the voltage at the terminals. At the top terminal of the uh, the Zener. So basically, that's it. And uh, as usual, I have a 20 volts input into my circuit, which comes to here. Here's my input filter cap. Here's the uh, op amp TL082 regulator. Here is the uh, green LED that drops down the that drops down for the base of the the, the transistor voltage so there it is and there's the uh, I put the two microfarad capacitor here just to quiet down the voltage that goes into the uh, into the uh, Zener well the voltage that's regulated by the Zener which is also the input into our, our positive input of the op amp and uh, that one is right here and that is right here that's the capacitor and the rest is just monitoring uh, 
all of those connections are just monitoring the activity in the circuit and uh, this is the main uh, series pass transistor that I'm using for my regulator here are my loads I have two about 50 ohms uh, resistors so they are in series and I will show you when I when I load it completely and and then I can load it all the way to 240 milliamps actually so that's basically it so let's let's demonstrate the circuit and also which I forgot to mention last time the op amp the op amp here is powered by a separate supply independent of this the voltage that's it's regulating so that is uh, from this second supply here and it's about 15 volts so 15 volts to ground and the voltage uh, the sorry the op amp is operating a uh, single ended uh, so from 15 volts to zero all right so let's demonstrate the circuit here as usual i will load this the the uh, so if you see you can see both So if you if you see it here, uh, also another point I like to mention is I'm also monitoring the uh, the positive and negative input into the op amp. So if we put this up here again, the positive and negative of the op amp I'm monitoring it here, right here. And it's this channel here, channel 1 and channel 2 of this uh, scope here. And you can see that uh, if you see it on this monitor here, it's they're very close. So they're very close. Both of them in, in measuring. They're within 0.1 millivolts. Point, uh, yeah, sorry, 0.1 volt difference. So, and as usual. I have also put a. Uh, this is the the load side of the the load side of the transistor, and then this is the input into the transistor. And the difference, as you can see, is the drop across the trans uh, across the series transistor. All right, so let's demonstrate it. So I'm going to load the circuit, so you can see the current on this meter here, gone from zero to 100 to about 120 milliamps, and you can see that. Boom. 125 milliamps and the voltage remained constant as you can see so from no load zero to full load you can see the voltage remained the same it's still made at 12 volts and uh, the Zener reference just remained the same as well right that wasn't our problem that was working fine it's when we varied the input so when we varied this input is what we had problems with and I can load it more this time if I go back here yeah, here you go I can load it to all the way to 250 milliamps the voltage remain constant okay so what I'll do is now I will um, I just quickly removed it because uh, the uh, the load resistors that I'm using here are very uh, they're like only one watt resistors so I don't want to heat them that's why so that's why I removed it quickly but anyway so I'm gonna increase the voltage here the input voltage here and take a look at the, uh, at the uh, so I'm gonna vary it here and take a look at your output voltage see how much it varied before it varied when we varied from 20 to 25 volts it varied from with 30 millivolts of change but now with the constant current source feeding the uh, the zener take a look so i'm going to increase it sorry this should be this one here take a look i'm going to go all the way to 25 you can see only 
um, only about four millivolts of change so before we had 30 millivolts of change but now because of the constant current source that's going here this current is constant that is the current that's flowing into the zener from the constant current source from the constant current source flowing this current remains constant because of that now the zener doesn't lose that uh, voltage and then if you can see the voltage across the zener which is this this meter here take a look I'm gonna decrease it from 25 to 20 volts and take a look that current is gonna be very very that gonna current is gonna remain constant and then here all the way till 20 practically no change as you can see you can see so this has solved our problem that we had where when our input voltage changed from 20 to 25 and our load varied by 30 millivolts but now it only varied by 2 to 3 millivolts only because of this constant current remaining so that's basically it and the constant current uh, is built around this PNP device it's uh, PN42050 and I chose that because it has a high beta of around a minimum of around 200 uh, and because of that and I also chose uh, I forgot to mention last time but I also joined my series bus transistor a very low beta uh, so that uh, it will be easier to for the uh, for the loop here for the negative feedback loop here to to remain stable so I, I chose a very low beta device here and also I like to mention uh, another ish another uh, important uh, fact is the um, just about current sources in general uh, so in general current sources would look like this specific current source here in order to have a good current source uh, uh, you're gonna need a good beta of, the, of this transistor and you're also gonna need the input the bias and resistors into the uh, into looking into the base of the transistor should be uh, much less than beta times re and that's just some uh, transistor theory you can check it so if you have those two conditions high beta and looking at the trans transistor the the uh, thevenin resistance is beta times re much less than beta times re then you will have good current source and that's what I have here. So this was the initial design. And so this is basically it. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you if you have any other questions, you can uh, leave it and then see if I can answer it for you guys. All right, take care.